So I guess hello or hey hey or sha. I should really have sort of a hat, sort of put on backwards for that. Hello, hello. Um, good morning. I'm I'm here today with a somber message. It doesn't matter what we do at this point. JavaScript has already won. Most people just ha haven't realized it yet. That's fine, they will. Hi, I'm Masek. I program Perl 5, I program Perl 6, I program JavaScript occasionally, and a bunch of other languages, and I'm here to talk about, a, depending on your perspective and your mood, a, a worrying trend or an absolutely fantastic trend or just a trend or a non-trend or something. Pretend that what I'm going to tell you now is absolutely true. It, it doesn't matter, but it might help. Fifteen years ago, I was visited by my future self from fifteen years in the future and presented with the age-old question, what do you actually do when, when you're in this situation? What, what do you talk about? Do you ask for advice? What do you do? So, are there flying cars in the future? And the answer was no. Uh, there are self-driving cars, but that's that's about it. They still go on the ground. What about aliens? Have you found aliens? And yes, we we found them, but they're boring. I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. Okay, how does computing look 30 years in the future from from 15 years back then? And the answer was widely interesting. In 2028, the web browser has been sort of slimmed and refined and reduced to its bare essence, what it really should have done from the beginning. And now it does only that. It presents pictures of cute kitten, kittens. <laughs> so the rest of this talk will just, no. Actually, what really happened was I, I was starting to prepare course material for, for JavaScript uh, about a year ago, last summer, and I came back to the language after uh, a few years of, of not being a webmaster, and I came back to it and, and looked at all the material on the web and went, wow, uh, something is happening here. JavaScript will power it all. Uh, it, it will be the most used language in the world, if it isn't already. Uh, and there's a dynamic here. It's the most hated and the most uh, appreciated language in the world. It's the most hated language in the world because everyone remembers that time back in 97 where it animated our web pages and made silly uh, butterflies flap after our, our mouse pointer or whatever. Totally useless. So, I would have protested against my 30-year-older uh, self and said, no way, JavaScript is ugly, it's slow, it's useless, it's not even a real language, it's just wrong in, in so many ways. And yes, if, if you look at the language, it, it is wrong. I, I mean, there's no question about it. There's so, so much bad that went into the language. For heaven's sake, it was designed for during an 11-day period where Brenda Nice said, I had to do this really, really fast, otherwise someone else would have. Well, the slow part at this point has been taken care of. In 2008, we saw the release of V8 uh, for Chrome, a, an entirely new JavaScript engine that did the impossible. It, it handled uh, just-in-time compilation for this uh, dynamic scripting, scripting language. It did inline, inlining, caching, and so on. So these guys, uh, led by Lars Bach, uh, a, a Danish guy who has a, a history with small talk implementations, and uh, they're just as impossible to, to make fast, and he did that too. So, so they take this really slow, really crummy language and, and make it fast in some way. A, a lot of sort of dynamic measuring and, and, and uh, jitting and optimization going on there. And soon after that we saw new implementations of, of JavaScript engines for Firefox and Internet Explorer with exactly the same idea. 
Now, that's not really the pro problem, slow or fast. Uh, the real problem is deployment. Pretend that you were an evil overlord and you want to take over the world by whatever means possible. And you want everyone to use your own evil language. <laughs> uh, now the first problem is to somehow get everyone to download this language, to install it on their own computer. That's going to be a lot of work. Now, guess what? Every single web browser currently deployed on a computing device except Lynx contains a JavaScript engine, a JavaScript implementation. If I were to guess, just from looking out here, how many JavaScript engines are currently in the room, I would guess, well, three figures at least. It's, it's scary. The language is everywhere. If you were stranded on a desert island with just your mobile phone or your iPad or whatever, and you didn't have any programming language installed on it, you would still be able to program happily for the rest of your days or until the battery ran out at least. <laughs> because it would have a JavaScript engine. You could program through the URL field in your browser. <laughs> and there's lots of computing devices. There's desktop computers, there's smartphones, there's notebooks, there's tablets, there's TVs. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if there were fridges and vacuum cleaners and dishwashers out there with with a JavaScript engine in them. JavaScript is winning by ubiquity. It's everywhere because we like to watch kittens on the web. <laughs> and people do weird things with it. I mean, in the Perl community, we like to sometimes golf programs for fun, sort of see who gets away with uh, typing the least, key, least amount of keystrokes to achieve a certain goal. In JavaScript, they do this sort of as regular day-to-day -day business just because there's a tube going between the server and the client, which you have to be careful with not to send too much traffic there. So not only do we produce lots of JavaScript, we produce lots of illegible JavaScript, just crammed all together without the white space and looking horrible. Uh, now, this trend is, is not incidental. It's, it's leading the way in, in a certain direction. JavaScript is quickly becoming the assembly language of the web. And there are a number of quotes here to sort of back that up. And people say different things. Uh, assembly language of the web, virtual machine of the web, bytecode of the web, and so on. It's the, the fundamental thing on the web, anyway, the thing we use to run the web. It's the substrate. Uh, substrate and, and people end up targeting JavaScript in various ways. If they don't write directly in JavaScript, which many still do, they have some other language which they just transcompile into JavaScript. So JavaScript is the sort of target format here, the bytecode format. And here's a, a quote from Eric Mayer. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter whether we call it assembly language or bytecode or make a parallel to p-code with Pascal's compilers or compare it to the JVM. You know, Java was intended to fill this role for the web. We would have HTML and CSS, and then we would have Java applets uh, and things like that. But it turns out that everyone hated Java applets. They were just sitting there looking morose in their own little rectangle on the page, and no one really liked that. Uh, and so JavaScript took over instead as, as this dynamic HTML thing. And here's Douglas Crockford weighing in on the same thing. No, it's it's not an assembly language. It's it's actually the VM. Blah blah blah. It doesn't really matter. It's it's down there, sort of at the foundation. Uh, it's working so well that we see projects like Google Web Web Toolkit. Uh, it's a toolkit that compiles Java to JavaScript. That's that's just crazy. So you write your entire application in Java and pretend JavaScript is not there, but it is there. Everything gets compiled to it. We have things like CoffeeScript where people say, okay, we learned a bunch of things uh, about JavaScript. Now we know better. Let's make a better JavaScript. And, and so you write everything in CoffeeScript instead, and life is beautiful until you get an error message and you have to de debug the JavaScript code. But people still do this. I, I won't disparage it in any way. It's becoming more and more of a viable programming uh, methodology. I, I know lots of mature companies using CoffeeScript today. And with source mapping, you will actually get your errors in your original source code as well. We have weird and crazy things like 
asm.js, which takes JavaScript and says, okay, this this was slow at least until V8 and Chrome, um, but we can make it machine fast. We can sort of connect it, tie it down to the machine layer and, and make it really, really fast. So you take the original JavaScript and you, you just do a number of weird syntactic things with it saying, okay, let's bit or this with a zero. So now we suddenly know it's an integer. We type it as an integer. So without changing the language at all, you get a faster language by, by using asm.js. And well, browsers are quickly catching up, then the thing that will happen in the summer is that we'll get a, an even faster engine for uh, Mozilla Firefox, for example. This Odin monkey is a, an optimization module for, for asm.js. We have things like mscripten, with, which takes uh, LLVM, a, a virtual machine bytecode format, and again, compiles it to, to JavaScript. And uh, people are doing awesome things with this as well. Have you seen the uh, 3D demo with, with the 3D rendering engine? Uh, well, it's the Unreal Engine, right? Uh, just running natively on, in the browser. That's fantastic. But that's just the web. Uh, the, the genie is still in the box. We, we have, JavaScript has spread all over the web and all over our web clients and so on. Surely JavaScript won't take over the world just by completely dominating the web. I mean, the web is just this small thing without any practical value, right? Well, we have these various things where JavaScript is currently leaking out into other different technologies, many of them on, on the desktop. Uh, so dashboard widgets, uh, Adobe's Air, which is basically saying, okay, let's, let's build desktop clients, but uh, with JavaScript technology. Uh, you script various, um, various uh, programs like Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, there's a lot of mobile development going on with JavaScript, and this is basically people's way to avoid programming for each individual platform, like Android and iOS and so on. You just write a JavaScript web application, and you get platform independence in some sense. Even Windows 8 apps exist now, which you can write either in uh, C++ or in JavaScript. So it's definitely leaking outside of the web as well, and it's doing this fast. Uh, we even get JavaScript as an entire operating system. Imagine that, sort of going from this silly butterflies things back in uh, 95, 98, to actually powering the entire operating system. That's kind of scary. What's going on here is really an instance of Atwood's law, which says that any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. I mean, look at Google Docs, look at Google Maps. This is just lifting what used to be uh, awesome desktop applications up to the web instead. Yes. He's my roommate. <laughs> there you go. This explains a lot, Inge. <laughs> Another case in point. Uh, Git is also very popular now. Uh, someone proposed a Kickstarter project saying, I want to build a JavaScript engine that allows you to do Git in the browser. Wow, Git in the browser. Apparently more people than I said wow, because it was funded in 28 hours. It reached its goal. And uh, I, I swear, if I had seen it in time, I would have founded it too. So this is, these are the forces in play, just putting, dumping everything that we know uh, and care about on the browser or on the web or using some kind of JavaScript technology to power it. We have Node.js in case you weren't satisfied to write just on the client. You can now write JavaScript both on the client and on the server. Uh, that's kind of awesome. And there's a lot of async goodness going on there. And there are entire web stacks now uh, on top of Node.js, for example, Meteor, which has a really nice demo on their homepage. If you haven't seen that, I don't have time to show it in the talk, but uh, it's, it's awesome what you can suddenly do. You, you get this really, really nice tie between the client and the server, mostly because now they're both running JavaScript. You see here how we 
step by step accepting JavaScript more and more in, into our lives. But isn't Perl 6 the future? I mean, I'm I generally up here talking about Perl 6, and I, I feel kind of strange um, standing here saying, well, JavaScript has already won. Uh, and I, I would like to, to say, yes, uh, Perl 6, of course, will win as well. Uh, Perl 6 is the future. But it will win by targeting JavaScript as well. Uh, there's currently a Google Summer of Code project, uh, which was accepted only a week ago or so by Pawel um, Murias. And he's building a recruiter backend for JavaScript. So we will have not just the JVM, uh, more and Parrot, we will also have a JavaScript backend. Which means that a project like TryRuby or TryPugs, like we had, should be super easy to get. And you can suddenly uh, run uh, Perl 6 in the browser. Yes, you have a question there. Is it a JavaScript backend for recruiter or a JavaScript? It's a JavaScript backend for recruiter. So you write your Perl 6, but it compiles into JavaScript. Okay. Is that opposite of what you have on the slide? Yes, that's <laughs> opposite. I, this must have been one of the I'm really tired, it's almost midnight slides. Thank you. It will run on JavaScript, yes. It will be Perl 6 and run on JavaScript. But we need a JavaScript to Perl 6 translator. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We need it both ways to survive, yeah. Yeah, they're even fixing the language itself and without breaking the web. This is the awesome thing. Uh, I was amazed when I realized what ECMAScript 5 was when it came out. By the way, we always say ECMAScript when we're talking about the spec. It's a horrible name, but that's what the language actually is called. Uh, and they even they even stole the use strict from, from Perl 5. Uh, but they have to put it in quotes in order to be backwards compatible. But it's obviously a, a, a straight borrow from, from the Perl uh, idea there. Uh, and if you thought ECMAScript 5 was awesome, like I did, with lots of fixes to the language and, and lots of improvement to the object model and so on, uh, just look at what they're doing with the next version, with ECMAScript 6 or ES.next or uh, ESHarmony. That's even awesomer. And so they actually have a process where they're able to improve and evolve the language. And that's not a guarantee. That's not something you get for free. They, they've worked really hard to do this. They're doing most of the improvements and, and sort of testing of ideas in a bootstrap JavaScript engine. So they're just evolving the language written in itself. So JavaScript has all it takes to survive anything. It's like cockroaches, or it's like sand on the beach. It gets in your sandals. It runs everywhere. It's fast. It's a de facto standard. And it's kind of bad originally, but they're working on it and improving it bit by bit. So it's getting there as a pleasant language to work with directly. And this is a, a slide borrowed from Brendan Eich. Always bet on JavaScript. They said it couldn't be fast. They said it couldn't be fixed. They said it couldn't do multi-core or GPUs. They were wrong every time. My advice is always bet on JavaScript. And I, I agree completely. And it's sort of up to us whether this is a utopic or dystopic view on the world. <laughs> you, you can't really stop JavaScript. It's not about whether you like it or not. It's about what will survive when everything changes around it. And my bet people will keep looking at kittens. JavaScript has already won. Thank you. Maybe they're underlords. Maybe they're underlords. They're at the foundation of everything, yes. I believe I have a minute of questions or so. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes? Speak louder, please. I will repeat the question. Nice. OK, so apparently there are even more uh, environments that target JavaScript than I was aware. And I would just like to show you, um, let's see.
languages that compile to JavaScript. Let's see if I have an internet connection. Yes, list of languages that compile to JS. This is a bloody long list. And we even have Perl there. Uh, it's in there somewhere. Yes, Perlito is mentioned as one of the projects here. I bet there are more languages that we could add to this list. Yes, Stefan. There's JavaScript in a telescope. Wonderful. In space. In space. There you go. JavaScript is already in space. It has escaped the gravity well. I rest my case. Thank you very much again.